So we've gone through the top 10 in draft pick rebuilds for this upcoming NBA draft after the draft lottery, but a team that had to give up the number three overall pick in this upcoming draft, the Brooklyn Nets, we didn't do a rebuild on. So for today's video, we are going to be rebuilding the Brooklyn Nets, who have had a plethora of rumors surrounding this team after their disaster of a season. Honestly, this team is in one of the worst positions in the NBA because they're too stubborn to rebuild. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? We are going to be rebuilding the Brooklyn Nets. And I get it. You you may not want to rebuild here in Brooklyn. They may not want to trade away Mikkel Bridges. They don't have their first round picks going forward. The Rockets have their third overall pick in this draft. Then it's a swap worse next year. So unless the Rockets are a bottom five team with us, which is not going to happen because they're trending in the other way, we're going to lose out on a really good pick. And you don't want to lose out on a really good pick next year because this year it's okay losing out on maybe a Reed Shepard or Stefan Castle, good complimentary pieces. Next year, when there's franchise changing talent, yeah, you don't want to lose out on somebody. We don't own a pick at all in 2026. We do own the Suns picks and in our favor, 2K does not like the Suns. And we did just pick up our new head coach, Jordy Fernandez. So it's a little bit of a new era here. No more Jock Vaughn, no more Kevin Ollie. And I do think I'm going to go through this offseason trying to blow it up. I do believe I'm going to move Mikel Bridges. But you know what? Sometimes I'll go into a full-on rebuild. I don't know if I want to do that. I wonder if we could still try to build a competitive roster, but still trading away Mikel. One trade that I thought was interesting for somebody that could be a little bit more of a high-end score for us would be trying to swap Mikel for Brandon Ingram. I'd also also try to include Dorian Finney-Smith in this deal. Now, I'd like to get maybe their first rounder in this deal as well, the 21st overall pick. We'd extend Brandon Ingram, and I'd feel maybe comfortable about a Brandon Ingram, and then hopefully in 2025 for agencies class, Donovan Mitchell duo. We'll see, but hopefully Brandon Ingram could keep us afloat next year. And yeah, Mikel Bridges is under contract for the next two years. Ingram, I think, could be a good number two. I don't know about Mikel. So we'll see if they'll do this trade, and we get a pick in this draft. They don't want to do that. I could throw in, hmm, I don't want to throw in Clowney. I don't want to throw in Whitehead. I think I can move Cam in another deal. I don't know if they could take on Dennis Schroeder. They can. Unless I take on Dennis uh, or I give them Dennis Schroeder and they'll give me Larry Nance Jr. They're not even going to counter that. Wow. Um. Yeah, I don't really want to throw in any additional first damn what about if i did dennis schroeder instead of dorian um finney smith just because he has a half star more trade value they still say no damn they don't want to move away uh off of brandon ingram okay so maybe i'm gonna just try to stay on the margins right now could i maybe move dennis schroeder and dorian finney smith for john collins i think i would like his offensive presence for us and they agree to that i would like to get a first rounder in this draft i honestly may try to sell high on cam thomas i'm not the biggest cam thomas fan but i do think he's someone that could net a solid return now, i don't know if I would pay Cam Thomas $25 million a year. I mean, I'll call up Golden State. I will try to get you guys off of that Andrew Wiggins contract. I don't know if they could afford that, and I would give you Ben Simmons' contract, but I would like to maybe get a Moses Moody in this deal as well. But yeah, no, they would want Mikel Bridges. Okay, never mind. What about Washington? Do you want to get off the Jordan Poole contract? It doesn't seem like you would, and then I would want the 26th pick in the draft, so I'd be taking on basically two more years of Jordan Poole's contract for Ben Simmons. Damn, they say no. And then one deal I'd like to make on draft night is going to be trying to trade Cam Johnson to the OKC Thunder for the 12th overall pick via the Rockets. I don't know if I can also get another first rounder in this deal as well. Maybe the Heat's lottery protected first round pick next year, which I'd assume they'll make the playoffs. But getting two first round picks for Cam Johnson, who could really be a nice floor spacer for OKC, could be worth it. And they are going to say no. They would want Jalen Wilson in a second. Yeah, let's send Cam Johnson to OKC. And Rob Dillingham is still available with the 12th overall pick. Yeah, we are going to take him. Let's freaking go. Because I think he's going to be my starting point guard next year. Him and Cam Thomas defensively in the backcourt isn't great. But I'm trying to just be good enough where I'm not going to lose a top five pick in the draft. And I got to bring back Nick Claxton in free agency or do a sign and trade with him. And I wonder if I can move that heat protected pick for Philly's pick at 16. And they would want to swap seconds. Let's do that. Let's get a second rookie from this class. Whoa, I could get Chris Middleton. That could really keep us in NBA purgatory. But I'm going to get Jacoby Walter, the athletic wing out of Baylor, someone that could play good defense, could knock down some threes for us right away, but could honestly be a steal of the draft later in his career if he develops properly. And we got a second rounder as well in this draft. I'm going to snag... I think I'm going to snag AJ Mitchell, who I view more as a point guard. All right, so I like our draft class here, and we're kind of going into a weird era of Nets basketball. I still don't know if Mikel Bridges is going to be the top guy here, but we are going to pay a lot of money to keep Nick Claxton. I don't even think I'm going to do a sign and trade. I'm not entering into a proper rebuild. In my last Nets rebuild, I entered into more of a proper rebuild there. We're going to try to stay around 500 and then hopefully elevate this team in free agency down the line or with another trade because I haven't really gone that route before. So let's give Nick Claxton $92 million across four years. 
years, and hopefully he does agree with that. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get him to resign. Boom, there we go. Four years, 92 million. I would not mind bringing back like a Dennis Smith Jr. or a Lonnie Walker. Uh, Lonnie Walker could be a good shooter off the bench, and Dennis Smith Jr. is a good defender. Ooh, and we do have a mid-level exception. I wouldn't mind going after Obi Toppin, Sadiq Bey, Kelly Oubre, trade or excuse me Tyus Jones we could use a point guard if Rob Dillingham isn't ready yeah because we're gonna make John Collins a power forward uh I would like for Rob Dillingham to be a point guard like I don't really want to see Ben Simmons into the rotation at all next year but I mean we we could throw him in there I would go after Obi Toppin I feel like that would make some sense but we do have Noah Clowney who I'm kind of high on so let's bring in Tyus Jones and Rob Dillingham could maybe be our sixth man next year which could be a great spot for him so I'm gonna give Tyus Jones about 12 million dollars over four years so a pretty big deal for Tyus Jones to come here to Brooklyn. And Cam Thomas is our highest overall player going into next year's season. I just need this team to be the 10th seed. But hey, who knows? 2K may make the Phoenix Suns really bad and we could still end up with the top pick in the draft. All right, so I think to stay competitive, we should probably have Rob Dillingham come off the bench, but I still want to prioritize the development of the young guys. So honestly, it could be a fun front court with John Collins and Nick Claxton. I do think Collins is better suited offensively at the five, but we kind of need Claxton's defensive presence there. Let's go 35 minutes to the Cam Bridges. Let's do about 33 three to Cam Thomas. 32 to Tyus Jones. So like, I, I'm a big fan of Daron Sharp. I think he could be fine for us. I want to see what Noah Clowney can do in year number two. We're going to keep Rob Dillingham as the sixth man. We're very happy that he fell to us at number 12. I think I could play Walter and Whitehead both this year. And then we'll probably have AJ Mitchell in the G League. No point of still giving Ben Simmons minutes. And we'll keep an eye on how the Phoenix Suns are this year. System proficiency. We're three and a half star balance under Jordy Fernandez. Can we get a win in his first career game as a head coach? Boom! We beat the Jazz. Cam Thomas drops 31 points. Dayron Sharp 20 off the bench. All right, I will take that. Mikel Bridges did not shoot the ball too well. And then we have a road game against the Bulls and a home game against the Knicks. And we just started off the season 3-0. Did I just build a good team here in Brooklyn? All right, Ken Thomas is making me eat my words after I was hating on him in the beginning of the video, but I'll take that start for sure. All right, we're good. The Nets may be back 33 and 18 right now. How about that? Wow, I did not think we we're going to be good because 2K is not like the Nets. Unless you make some big changes and bringing in John Collins, bringing in Tyus Jones, bringing back Claxton, not trading away Bridges, we have the best defense in the Eastern Conference. Shout out to Jordy Fernandez, man. Our offense is still, we're not great. We're third worst in offense, but that's fine. As long as we're not gonna give the Rockets a good pick. And Cam Johnson is making me eat my words. I don't know why he didn't have any stats last year. He will be a restricted free agent. Those are some good numbers. Mikal Bridges on the chopping block this offseason for sure. Rob Dillingham is giving me an efficient rookie year. Tyus Jones averaging 5.7 assists. I would like for him to be a little bit more efficient. John Collins, you could score more, you know. I don't mind bringing you back. Nick Claxton's doing a great job. I don't hate the bench, but Clowney and Walter and Whitehead have all been pretty inefficient. But I don't think I'm going to make any trades. Um, I don't think I'm going to re-sign Mikel just yet. Definitely not re-signing Ben Simmons because I want to still test the Mikel Bridges trade market this offseason. I assume Collins is going to opt in after the down season he's having. But let's ride out the season and hope the Suns are doing bad. 2K is not like the Suns. They're 24 and 27. Maybe they don't end up making the playing tournament. That'd be huge for us. And Shea Gilgis Alexander wins MVP. Rob Dillingham off the bench. Rookie of the year that we got with the Cam Thomas pick. That is amazing. Jalen Duren, sixth man of the year. Why didn't Detroit bring him back? I don't know. Uh, Webby gets Depoy. Most improved goes to James Wiseman. And clutch player of the year is Tyrese Maxey. So we didn't get anybody on an all-NBA team. Uh, no Donovan Mitchell there, it seems like. Because I do want to find out if Mitchell is going to resign. And we did get Nick Claxton on all defensive second team. We finished as the two seed. We're going up against the seventh seeded Sixers in round number one. Wow. Even if we lose in round number one, I am fine with this. And the Suns... Oh my God, everything is going right for the uh, for the Brooklyn Nets right now. Oh my God, they bought him out. What? Oh my God, the West was that close. They finished with the worst record in the Western Conference. They finished with the fourth worst record in the NBA. Oh my God, let's go. That is amazing for us. And I'm not expecting too much in the playoffs, but hey, if we can win a game or two, I'll be happy. We just won game one by three points. Cam Thomas, man. Oh my God. I did not think he was going to be this good in 2K. Game two, we do end up losing by two points. John Collins had a good offensive game. All right, Mikhail, do you want to step up? We end up giving up 2020 to Embiid. We're trying to avenge the 2021 team that lost in round number one. No, I lied. 
It was the 2019 team that lost in round number one to Philly, and they also lost in 2023 in round number one to Philly. But we're down two games to one right now. Cam Thomas fouled out in 28 minutes. Game four goes to the Brooklyn Nets. We won by four in overtime. Tyus Jones with 21, seven and three. Double doubles for John Collins and Nick Claxton. Game number five goes to Philadelphia. They end up winning by 35, unfortunately. And are they gonna win in six? they do all right you know what i'm fine if you would have told me we would have made the playoffs as the two seed i would have been well okay with that mikhail bridges was like the lights were too bright for him uh i know he's a great defender but with that valued contract i think we're going to test the market in the offseason we'll see if donovan mitchell wins a title in cleveland maybe he pulls off like a Kawhi Leonard and leaves and they do end up sweeping the thunder and he gets finals MVP. Let's find out if he's going to be a free agent. I don't even know if I'll be able to afford him though, just because John Collins is probably going to opt in. But here we go, draft lottery time. Pick four. That is amazing. That is amazing. What are we going to get with it? We end up getting pick two. Let's go. Let's go. And we're going to give the Houston Rockets, not even the 28th pick in the draft. We're getting our pick back because the Rockets ended up with a worse record than us. They ended up with the 15th overall pick in this draft. So we are able to draft a generational guy here at number two. And yeah, Donovan Mitchell did not sign an extension with Cleveland. So let's see the number one overall pick. The Toronto Raptors are on the clock and they are going to draft Cooper Flagg out of Duke makes sense so we are going to take ace bailey out of Rutgers with the second overall pick in this draft who could be a mikhail bridges replacement we'll find out the heater on the clock at number three they get dylan harper so that lottery protected pick i guess would have more value currently the lakers at number four they get colin murray boyles out of usc south carolina carter bryant goes five surprised to see no like hugo gonzalez no one troy or yet as the sixth overall pick was traded for D'Lo in a future first and the Lakers get DJ Wagner who just committed from or excuse me transferred from Kentucky to Arkansas followed coach Calipari and with the 28th pick I'm getting Carter Knox the uh, brother of Kevin Knox so we're gonna sign both these guys right now team part options wow John Collins opts out of 26 and a half million dollars interesting uh we're gonna pick up the team options on Clowney and Whitehead honestly for AJ Mitchell he's not gonna crack the rotation next year we may want that two million dollars so Cam Thomas get the qualifying offer same with Dayron Sharp do we have cap space to offer Donovan Mitchell a deal we do now can we finesse this where we can also bring back Cam Thomas probably but the question is like could i move mikel bridges to the four do i want to keep him at the four we're gonna have a lot of really good guards though if we do sign donovan mitchell who i'm going to offer a contract to and we do sign donovan mitchell four years 193 million dollars so um right now i will have to pick up um or renounce the rights on daron sharp which i don't want to do but we do have noah Clowney as a potential backup five option but i'd probably have to move either mikel bridges or tyus jones if i want to bring back sharp and i'm still okay moving bridges but then again bridges is a really good fit on this team defensively and now with like Dillingham and Cam Thomas and Donovan Mitchell he doesn't need to be a top scorer for us I just don't know what power forward I'm really getting that can space the floor that would be on the market like Pascal Siakam I'm not saving money with that deal right like I'm not probably going out maybe I buy low on Jabari Smith Jr and we trade Mikel Bridges for Jabari I mean that's like not rumored but Mikel to Houston's been rumored but then who's playing small forward I guess it would be Ace Bailey all right would they even do this Mikel Bridges for Jabari Smith Jr straight up they say no I don't really want to give up like anything too special. They would want to reek Whitehead in this deal, but I'd have to take on Hashimura, which I don't really think is worth it because I'm not saving that much money in this deal. So if I did Mikel Bridges in two seconds, they would want uh, to reek Whitehead and Rui Hashimura. I would give up maybe the swap wars, Philadelphia and Washington in 28, probably the worst picks I own. Will they do this? They say no. Damn, they really want to do Whitehead for Cam Whitmore. Um, That's tempting. I gotta give up another first in this deal. Um, but I get Jabari Smith Jr. You know what? Let's do that. So we end up trading Mikel Bridges. We're gonna bring in Donovan Mitchell. I'm gonna be able to bring back both Cam Thomas and Dayron Sharp. And boom, there we go. So Cam Thomas, let's bring him back. I don't know how Cam Thomas and Donovan Mitchell would work out, but then again, he could be a trade piece, if anything. So let's give him a three-year deal worth around 75 million. And let's bring back Dayron Sharp about two years, 22 million. And we get Cam Thomas, four years, 100 million, actually, and Daron Sharp back. So Jason Tatum goes back to Boston. Jalen Brunson goes to Disneyland, signs with the Orlando Magic. Kyrie gets a bag to resign with the Dallas Mavericks. 50 million a year is kind of crazy for him. And here's the team led by Donovan Mitchell. We have Jabari Smith Jr. at the four, Cam Thomas, Nick Claxton. I mean, we picked up Cam Whitmore. This team has a lot of good scoring. I don't know if we have 
have enough of the rock to go around for all these score first guys. All right, so for this season, like Noah Connie's not going to make the cut. We do have a 10 man rotation of Tyce Jones, Donovan Mitchell, who we could convert Donovan to the one. We'll see. Ace Bailey, Jabari Smith Jr., Nick Claxton with Cam Thomas, Rob Dillingham, Cam Whitmore, Daron Sharp, and a little bit of Jacoby Walter off the bench. This is still a deep team. We could still make a trade down the line if we wanted to. Donovan Mitchell may want to run this team. We'll see. He drops 35 points and fouled out in 25 minutes in his Nets debut. Nice. And we're here at the 2026 trade deadline. We are five games better this year. We are 38 and 12. I think we had 33 wins around last year's mark. And we are at the top of the Eastern Conference. We are now the second best offensive team. Adding Donovan Mitchell will do that to you. And we're still the best defensive team. Shout out to us and the Knicks running defense here in the Eastern Conference in the state of New York. Donovan Mitchell averaging 28 and a half points. His actually scoring has gone up here in Brooklyn. Cam Thomas, still a really good scoring option for us, and the efficiency is up too, which is great to see. Jabari Smith Jr., a real nice number three option. Tyus Jones averaging five assists. His efficiency is off the charts. Uh, Dillingham's numbers are down a little bit. The efficiency is kind of up, which is insane. Cam Whitmore's really good. I mean, Ace Bailey is only averaging 6.4 points as the number two overall pick. He's kind of been struggling. I'm sure he'll be probably out of the rotation come playoff time. Not out of the rotation, out of the starting lineup. And I think we may insert Cam Whitmore there. And Shea Gilgis Alexander wins the 2026 MVP award. Cooper Flag is your rookie of the year. Jalen Duran is your sixth man of the year. Wemby takes home Depoy. Ron Holland most improved. Clutch player of the year is Shea. And we get coach of the year in Jordy Fernandez. Hell yeah. We don't get anybody on all NBA first team or second team, but we do get Donovan Mitchell on all NBA third team. There's Jalen Brunson in Orlando. And we do not get maybe like a Nick Claxton on an all-defensive team. Ace Bailey is on all-rookie second team as we are the one seed in the Eastern Conference going up against the Indiana Pacers who do play well in 2K in round number one. So yeah, here are the end of the season stats. Donovan Mitchell ended up hitting 29 points. I'm surprised he wasn't maybe MVP. Ace Bailey definitely was better towards the end of the year, but I think come playoff time, I'm going to insert Cam Whitmore into the rotation. And by rotation, again, I just mean the starting lineup. So like, yeah, we're going to play our top like seven a little bit more. Take it on Indiana. We do lose game number one by two points. Don't make me a fraud. We lost last year as a two seed. I don't want to lose as a one seed. Blow them out in game two. Good stuff, Donovan. Game number three goes to Indiana. We lost by one. All right. We're not doing this right now. Mitchell at 44 was not enough. Game number four. Oh my God, man. I'm about to lose to a seven seed and an eight seed in back-to-back -back years. Tyus Jones, not really doing me any favors shooting wise. Cam Whitmore, not doing me any favors either. Can we come back down three to one? We do force a game six, 130, 117. Jabari Smith Jr. playing really good, man. Game number six. Yes, we force a game seven. We won by 16. Here we go. Game seven against an eight seed. This is just to take on Detroit in round two. All right. We get off to a good start though at the Barclays Center as we're currently up by three here in the third and we pull away and the Indiana Pacers are going to blow a three to one lead. We end up winning by 20. Donovan Mitchell drops 37. He went 11 for 11 at the line. Jabari Smith Jr. Double double and we stay alive. I was ready to talk about some big changes in the offseason if we ended up losing in round number one, but Donovan Mitchell is carrying this team right now. So here we go. Round number two, I'm like debating inserting Rob Gillingham into the starting lineup if we wanted to, and then bench Tyus Jones. But Tyus Jones is a good facilitator, and he finished strong in that series. Detroit's got Cade, Ivy, Assort. Oh, the John Collins Revenge Series. How much did he get per year by the Pistons? 21 million. I'm starting to think like John Collins is becoming like undervalued in this league. I know the contract is kind of big, but I feel like teams like Detroit should go after him in the offseason or even Brooklyn. He shouldn't cost too much. We lost by six to Detroit in game number one. Please win game number two. This is such a beatable series as well. It's not like we're taking on a 2K darling here in round number two. We're up two to one. All right. What a great first quarter defensively and offensively. Game four goes to Brooklyn. All right. We are up three to one. We just came back down three to one. Don't let that happen. Reversed. We get it done in five and we're taking on the Brooklyn Nets. Nope. The Boston Celtics in the conference finals. Let's go, man. Jabari Smith did not play well in that series. Shot 39% from the field, but we can get revenge on the team that took away their draft picks from a bad trade from Billy King in the mid-2010s. We start off the conference finals with a two-point victory. Game number two goes to the Boston Celtics. We go up two to one. We go up three to one, and we are in the NBA finals. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is one of my greatest rebuilds, I think. Honestly, with this Nets team and not even trading away McKellen, year number one. We're taking on the Dallas Mavericks now. Kyrie Revenge Series. Game one goes to the Brooklyn Nets by seven points. Mitchell drops 43, seven rebounds, and five steals. 
We do lose game two by four in overtime. That hurts. They have Franz Wagner there. They also have Buddy Heald as well and Bobby Portis. We take a two to one lead by 16. Luke has 45, eight and 13. It's not enough because Donovan Mitchell and Rob Dillingham had 70 combined. Dillingham had 35 points in 23 minutes. How is that even possible? As we ended up getting blown out in game number four. Huge game five. Goes to the Brooklyn Nets. We end up winning by 18. Cam Thomas, 31. And let's see, can we win the 2026 NBA Finals in six games? or are we going to a game seven at the Barclays? It's looking real good for us right now. And yeah, we're about to get it done. That's what I'm talking about. Rob Dillingham, 24 points. I could start him literally at the uh, starting point guard spot next year or Donovan Mitchell there and Dillingham at the two. Uh, Mitchell guarding Franz Wagner, definitely a height disadvantage here, but he is not going up with it. And that is going to be an offensive three seconds. And like, we have so many young guys in the wings too. Like I didn't even play Noah Clowney this year. We have Jacoby Walter. Like that Cam Thomas trade was great for us as roll Ace Bailey. There we go. The number two overall pick in the 26 draft waiting in the wings as well because obviously this team wouldn't be able to pay everybody like with Jabari Smith being a free agent and then Cam Whitmore being a free agent one year after and then you have like Walter and uh, Noah Clowney like obviously these guys are all going to be free agents and that is going to be out of bounds on us I guess Luka mid-range jumper that is good like Tyus Jones solid point guard I don't know I'm gonna try to go into year three and go back to back. We'll see if we're able to do so. Damn, Jabari's got 25 and seven. Ty Jones and Jabari working the pick and pop. Now he's got, uh, I don't know. I guess that's Bobby Portis on him. Let's see what he can do. Go up Jabari with the left hand. It's too easy. He's got 27 as we're up by 50. Ty Jones driving, kick that out to Jabari Smith, who's wide open, A plus three pointer. Swoosh, he's got 30 points here in game number six. Him and Mitchell are combined for 63. That is insane. And we got Nick Claxton roaming the paint here. Is he the only, I guess him and Sharp are the, I was going to say the only OG Nets, but we also have Cam Thomas. Noah Clowney is still here. We unfortunately had to trade away Derek Whitehead. Donovan Mitchell to the rim right hand. No good, sadly. Nick Claxton said, get that out of here. Donovan Mitchell's going to run the floor here. Come on, let's get a nice bucket to end things off. Is it going to be Jabari Smith inside? Yes, it is. Jabari Smith go up. Oh, back to Tyus. I just feel like the pick and pop with Jabari Smith is like an utter cheat code because now we got, I think, Jaden Hardy on him. Smaller defender. This should be easy money for Jabari Smith. Go up with it. Come on, don't get it three seconds. There we go. He's got 32. And the Brooklyn Nets have won the 2026 NBA championship with Donovan Mitchell being your finals MVP. So he just won back-to-back -back finals with two different teams. You know how impossible that is? Chris Paul is heading to the Hall of Fame. I mean, we could make a blockbuster move here in the final offseason if we wanted to. We don't have any random first-round picks here because the Suns pick will be in next year's draft. And good thing we're good right now because we would have had to give, like, the Rockets our first-rounder this year, and we're giving them pick 30. That feels good. And we're going to pick up the team options on Cam Whitmore, Rob Dillingham, Jacoby Walter, and Noah Clowney. And we're going to offer the qualifying offer to Jabari Smith Jr. And we're going to give him a five-year, $196 million extension. So I kind of want to on this team back if i feel like there's any regression we could make a move at the deadline and donovan mitchell is a 93 overall jabari smith at an 87 we got some progression all around let's try to win it again man it's crazy like some really good players are not going to be in the rotation i do want to see what rob dillingham could do as the starting point guard we're going to have bailey back in as the starting small forward cam thomas is the sixth man then we'll have cam whitmore tyce jones and then probably like walter I don't think he's going to make the rotation. I know he's a good overall, but I think I'm just going to play nine guys and then seven more minutes. Let's go 32 to Smith, 30 to Claxton, 28 to Bailey, and 30 to Dillingham. Says the proficiency would be four stars under Jordy Fernandez, and we start off the season with a road victory. We also kind of like dominated out of round one in the playoffs as well. 34 points for Cam Whitmore off the bench. I will take that. And here at the trade deadline, we are 40 and 10, even better than we were last year, I believe, at this point as well, because I think we had like 38 wins, and I will definitely take that. We are the number one offensive team, the number one defensive team, by far the best point differential in the NBA. And Cam Thomas is averaging 20 points off the bench. Yeah, this team has its offense. It has its defense. We're ready to go and hopefully win a championship. Shout out to Cam Whitmore as well. And Luka Doncic wins the 2027 MVP award. Cameron Boozer, the son of Carlos, wins rookie of the year. Jalen Dern, six man of the year behind Walker Kessler. Wemby Depoy, most improved, goes to Nikola Topic and LaMelo Ball, clutch player of the year. And Jordy Fernandez, coach of the year. We do see Wemby on all NBA first team. Ron Holland on the Bulls on all NBA second team. Oh my God. Pretty good numbers there in year number three. Probably should have won most improved player for sure. Donovan Mitchell snubbed on an All-NBA team, that's for sure. We ended the season as the one seed. Taking on the Philadelphia 76ers in round number one with Maxi, Devin Carter, Jimmy Butler, and Embiid Stell. Wow, they traded for Jimmy this year. They brought back Vucevic. 
They traded him to Orlando in the Dwight Howard deal. What did they give up for Jimmy Butler this season? DeMar DeRozan and Jason Sannon. Okay, interesting, but we can look to get revenge on the team that knocked us out of the playoffs in year number one. We did have two 20-point-per-game scores. Ace Bailey has not really lived up to the hype as the number two overall pick, but obviously we're not really giving him a ton of time um, and just kind of possessions to be a number one option for us. And let's see what happens here. Battle of two Atlantic Division teams. Game number one goes to Brooklyn by 28. Rob Dillingham with a great game. 11 assists combined between our backcourt. And we take a 2-0 lead. We end up winning by 17. In a game which Donovan Mitchell only scored 17 points, we get it done. Game three does go to Philadelphia. They win the first one at the Wells Fargo Center. Can we at least take one of them in Philly? Yes, we can. We end up going up three games to one. And can we win in five? Yes, we can. And we're going to advance. We beat them by 50. Wow. Our last two games to win a series, last year in game six of the finals, this year in game five, have been absolute blowouts. We're going up against the Knicks in round number two post Brunson. And they got McBride, Giddy. Oh, geez. Trey Murphy, Randall, Colwell, I mean, I don't know how this team is in round two, but shout out to Joyce Randall. We do win game number one. It hurts me to do this to my Knicks, but we are so much better than them. We should definitely sweep this Knicks team, honestly. And we're up three games to zero. Every game would probably still be a Knicks home game, but it's looking like we are going to gentlemen sweep them and advance to the conference finals for the second straight season. We're taking on the Detroit Pistons, a team we beat in round two last year. Now they paired up the number one and number two overall picks from the 2021 draft in their backcourt in Cade and Jalen Green, which is kind of fun. Still a John Collins revenge series. They still got Quinn and Grimes, Isaiah Stewart, Kelly Oubre, Marcus Sasser still there. We win game number one by 35. Donna Mitchell drops 41. He's averaging 28 in the playoffs. Game two goes to Brooklyn. Game three goes to Detroit. And we have a brand new series on our hands. We are up three games to two. We won game five. All right, 122-116. Are we going to a game seven? Nope, we win in six by six points in Detroit. And we are going to be taking on the one-seeded OKC Thunder here in the NBA Finals. Excuse me, they are the two-seed. We almost took on the eight-seeded Nuggets, which would have been pretty cool. So here we go, Thunder versus the Nets. Last year, we beat the Mavericks, but two years ago, they lost to the Cavs in four. Can we finish this off with a two-peat, man? Just end this video on a high note. Game number two, we do end up winning by three. Almost blew it in the fourth quarter. Game number three goes to the Thunder by 12. All right, let's tie it up, please. Please. No, we're down three to one. Come on. Can we come back down three to one? We did it to the 18 and Pacers last year. No, they beat us in five. Wow. All right. We got humbled real quick. And Shea Gilgis Alexander is your finals MVP. But this was one of my favorite rebuilds I've done in a little bit, man. Rebuilding this Brooklyn Nets team, getting guys like John Collins, Rob Dillingham, Tyus Jones, bringing back Nick Claxton to make this team actually pretty competitive in the 25 season. We were the two seed, got bounced in round one, but brought in Donovan Mitchell, traded Mikel Bridges to Houston for Jabari Smith Jr., and the rest was history. So that's going to be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, I would appreciate you dropping a thumbs up. Let me know what you think the Nets should do this offseason, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.